Alright, we back with part three. This Charles White interview. I wonder how many parts I'm going to work this up into. Or if I'm going to even finish the whole interview with y'all. Because I might just be like, man, whatever. I done gave him like five parts. I'm going to go ahead. Unless y'all keep it. Unless y'all like want me to really finish the interview. You know what I'm saying? With y'all. Because I'm going to finish the interview. It's just, am I going to finish it with y'all? You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, that's part three. I feel like I'm going to make it to at least six, seven parts if I finish it with y'all. But uh, do me a favor, man. Go grab your hat. Hat I got on red. I got a green. You got the blue and cream. You feel me? Link will be in the comments. If you want to show me some love, show me some support. When you watch these reactions with me, you throw this bitch on. You know what I'm saying? But with all that being said, let's get into this and see what's, what we talking about. Speaking of the speaking of the Chitlin circuit, uh, I want to get to the T. We did the TK interview that did damn near a million views. Uh, he spoke out after that, showed you a lot of love too. He never disrespected you. You never disrespected him. You just said what really happened. Yeah. What's that like now? Oh, uh, I finally got one Live Nation chick from the from from the first show to Las Vegas. I just got that the other day, so I still ain't been paid all my money. Uh, he been calling. Uh, I don't want to talk, nigga. I ain't been paid all my money. Uh, he saw that I bought my, I purchased a, a, a necklace for my daughter for her birthday. Uh, he reached out to my jeweler. Uh, somebody he's been in contact with, doing business with. Uh, he reached out to my jeweler, KD the jeweler, uh, and offered to pay for my, for my daughter's necklace. That was nice. He ain't paid for it. <laughs> Niggas just Damn. be talking. Hey, hey. Niggas just do be talking. Like, seriously, I don't know why, but niggas do just be talking. They just be saying anything. Why Why you got to say what you said, bro? He was straight without him buying his daughter a necklace. You going to sit here and, and reach out. You really reached around me to act like he was going to buy the necklace and didn't do the shit. Come on, man. What you wanted the jeweler to tell Charles and White? Like, yeah, he said he's going to pay for your necklace just to basically be in his ill. I learned that about people. I learned that about people. They just say some shit to somebody else. So you can go, so that somebody else can say it to you just so they can, like, be in contact with you, bro. I feel like that should be chess, though. That should be chess, not checkers. It be slick as hell, but niggas do be just saying shit. That's necklace. That was nice. He ain't paid for it. Niggas just Damn. be talking. Yeah, he ain't paid for it. <laughs> and I'm a nice little perk. Yeah, he ain't, so niggas just be talking. But I see him bragging about he done got his live nation chick. Oh. Uh, I seen him say do interviews or ask or tell Charles and Dewberry send me that cash out. Uh, he got my cash out from the two hundred fifty dollars he cashed out me for them five shows. Oh, uh, I've met I've met other legendary comedians uh, in this game. Oh, uh, and they all said when they watched this interview, they knew he was fucking over me because he keep emphasizing uh, that I have to pay my due and. And, 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 and one, one, one legend in particular, uh, not that they said anything toward T.K. Kirkland, uh, Mr. Shucky Ducky uh, came in one of my most recent shows and said, with this kind of power you have because you're an interesting person, you're very interesting, you don't have to be funny. You put asses in seats. And that's proven. Hey, that, that's kind of, I kind of agree, though, because... He, however way Charleston come at you, bro, you gonna just about accept both. If you rock with him, if you don't like him, of course. But whether he come funny, you gonna take it. You gonna take it in because he he making you laugh. You funny as hell. Whether he come serious, you gonna take it in because he's saying some real shit. Probably, you know what I'm saying. So he can get he can get you the crowd. He don't really gotta be funny as long as he pop his shit and it's real. Motherfuckers gonna tune in. People come out to see you because you're interesting and you're very interesting. And that's all that matters. And that's what the old comics are forgetting. He can put asses in seats. He don't have to be funny. You probably know Vistaprint for business. You say his ass can sell out a show. You know what I'm saying? That shit crazy for you to not for you to be at a comedy show to see Charleston White and he ain't even gotta make you laugh. You just there to see Charleston White. That's a real shit. Oh, uh, I just want people to take note that I'm still doing show. You don't see Live Nation tour, do you? I leave it at that. 
It looked like Live Nation was hating on you, and then TK Kirkland was fighting to from get his, you from, on that from, tour. From his story, point of view, or mine? Uh, I think basically some of the text message you showed and then shit that he said was like, you had some bad shows, but he still begged them to uh, keep you I, on the tour. I never had no bad show. I never had not one bad show. When you heard Sancho, Sancho said, man, that nigga killed it. Sancho said, I didn't even know Sancho and his wife was at the show. That nigga went on Corey Oakham and said he killed it. TK lying. I never had no bad show. I had an incident in Houston surrounding the Jay Prince in takeoff situation with weapons. No bad show. I quit after that show. Live, Na I, Live Nation wasn't hating on me. Everything was going good. I wasn't getting paid. Nigga, Live Nation wasn't hate. We're not going to do Live Nation like that. TK was playing on a nigga. Saying it's Live Nation, Live Nation. One night, Miami, Live Nation executive is in the audience. I thought I had an horrible show. Live Nation said it was great. Guess what? It was my weapons and props. TK come back and said, man, just man, don't use the weapons, man. It make you look like you're amateur, like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's like, shit like this be like, it's, when he just mentioned the weapon shit, the T and T Kirk Kirkland said what he said. Is he hating or is he giving him advice? Like some real genuine advice. That's what people, it be hard to like tell the difference between the two. But on the, already, I don't even know the situation and it just sound like TK Kirkland on bullshit, but I don't know his side, so it's just hard to say, baby. TK Kirkland, I know you in the, the comments, bro. The fake TK Kirk. <laughs> don't use the weapons, man. It make you look like you're amateur, like you don't know what you're doing. Well, I am, my nigga. They, they, <laughs> it's my crutch. But you just told me Live Nation loved it. Why you say it don't do them? Same in Las Vegas. I killed it in Las Vegas. When we get to San Diego, he said, hey, man, try not to, try not to be funny tonight. Just why, why do you say that? You said that last interview. I, I meant to ask I you that. I don't know what made those niggas say that. This shit weird. Who even, who? See, this is why I hate when I don't be knowing the backstory for real, bro. Who brought Charleston on to the tour? Was it Live Nation or TK Kirkland? If it was TK Kirkland, it's like he wanted to see him shine. And then he see him shine too much, and he like, nah. Is TK Kirkland even fucking funny? I don't even never even hear him see no, see no, say no jokes. I don't know TK Kirkland because of the fake TK Kirkland, bro. Like seriously. To be funny tonight. Just why? Why do you say that? You said that last interview. I, I meant to ask I you that. I don't know what made those niggas say that. <laughs> my spirit told me this nigga fucking over me when he said that. My crew, do bear everybody get mad because they heard him say it. I don't know why he said it. You know what? Son, cross your son, tell them say it. I was making him look bad because he be. tell the same joke. He had to be, because what the fuck does that mean? Try not to be funny tonight. This is a comedy show, nigga. What wrong with you? So Sancho them said, I was making him look bad because he tell the same joke every night, night after night. All of my shit online, I ain't told the same shit yet. I don't do the same shit. I got a show right now and they record a whole album. TK Kirkman said, I can't do an album. Nigga, I done done an hour 30 sometimes, killing it. So Live Nation wasn't causing no problem on me. TK Kirkland was being intimidated by the, what I was bringing. He kept trying to dim the light, try not to be funny, don't bring the weapon. But he telling me, Live Nation saying, don't bring the weapon. <laughs> Did you know you can increase bro, your revenue? He dirty as hell, bro. If this shit true, and this is how this shit went. This one, I lead to hear both sides of the story. But of course, TK. If I had TK Kirkland right now, he gonna say all that shit a lie. So it'd be hard. But Sean said that he had receipts. So how you gonna tell a motherfucker in the comedy show don't be funny? You know? How you gonna tell Bernie Mac not to say fuck them kids or something? You know what I'm saying? It just don't make sense, bro. But I thought they loved it, my nigga. T so so TK is saying, can't nobody come backstage. You know how I know? Because Live Nation is saying the approval is coming from TK. Then he soft as hell for making like uh, Live Nation saying it. 
Why Live Nation ain't saying that to Charleston White? You don't think they would have reached out to Charleston White? They. You know how I know? Because Live Nation is saying the approval is coming from TK, who can come back here. It's his show. TK mm. is saying it. Because in my mind, TK fucked with all the gangbanging niggas who can get, come on, homie. You gonna isolate me by myself, my nigga. I can't get no B-roll footage behind on stage of my show. I can't take no pictures. My grandmother can't come backstage. Live Nation ain't saying that, my nigga. Because Live Nation and the venues is saying we have to get TK's permission to get where we can come back here. <laughs> come on, my 83 year in my home city? You lying, my nigga. I quit before the Dallas show. I quit. I sent a message to him at one Live Nation. I quit. But I finished out the rest of the show. Even though I had been paid. I didn't come on live and say, man, fuck, I, nigga, I finished out the rest of the show. Even though I had been paid. You know, even, even though I had been paid. So, no, man, uh, I was as professional as I could be, but I was watching that nigga fuck me on it. I can't sell my merch. Part of the agreement was I sell my merch. Damn. What you was on with this man, bro? God damn, what you trying to help him get the old? What you not? What the fuck, bro? He can't say a merch. He can't have nobody backstage. He can't bring on the weapons. You know he, he loves his weapons. He can't tell no jokes. The fuck you want to stop breathing next? Part of the agreement was I said my merch. Come on, homie. He lying. So I've never seen a comedian at his stature Go try to do so many interviews. I quit talking about it, homie. I did the one interview with you, and I hadn't talked about it since. When I done the Danza Project interview, he saw me and Brittany Renner was going to be there. He reached out to the Danza Project to try to do an interview to come tell his side of the story. Out of respect for what, you know, my relationship with Danza. Man, come on, homie, now. Nah. What do you want to interview for? Who called and said, can I interview and come talk about this? <laughs> So, no, I don't let me go. If you know T. Kirkman, you know I ain't lying. That's all I'm gonna say. If you don't know him, uh, you'll, you'll be on, you'll be straddled the fence. But if you know T.K. Kirkman, uh, or if you know Charleston White, you know I ain't just gonna rush to him and lie. Him. What's wrong with the Chitlin circuit? Because he kind of made comments about basically you'll be on the Chitlin circuit forever. That's not what oh, that's money ten, is. That's $10,000 ten, that's ten, a night on the Chitlin circuit. Oh, I want to stay in the chitlin circuit because that's what make everybody. And if you want and, and, and want to sustain them niggas and they are the comedian they, they have to come back to the chitlin circuit. Everybody got to come back to the chitlin circuit, nigga. Little baby now, little dirt, everybody got to come back to the chitlin circuit because that's who your base is. That's the base and the core of your fan group. So why wouldn't you rest on them and they love you? Those are the people who buy your t-shirts. Them the motherfuckers standing in line. What's the chitlin circuit, bro? If y'all know, if y'all know y'all made it this far with me, let me know. What the hell is that, bro? Them and they love you. Those are the people who buy your t-shirts. Them the motherfuckers standing in line. I never, I never heard of no chitlin circuit. They said pay $12,000. I don't know, maybe it's something, something else. I'm thinking this it's a real thing. I don't know, bro. Like I said, I never heard of it. Just let me know if you know. You fucking heads, man. Extremely accurate. So why would why wouldn't you want to stay there and live amongst them people, huh? So he just saying that to try to shame a nigga. And I'm telling niggas, ain't nothing wrong with the chitlin circuit, niggas. Our ancestors got us here off this shit. And everybody run back down here eventually. So why not just stay down here? I run up there, but nigga, I come back down here. I run up there, but nigga, I come back down here. Absolutely. Do you feel like, uh, it's, it's crazy I'm mentioning this now, because uh, Jeezy and his wife divorced after two years. Um, Tiana Taylor and Iman Shepard, they, they divorced. Well, they split up. Um, 
Papoose and, and, and Remy Ma, they were they reportedly he, he held her down for six years while she was locked up. She she's reportedly messing with a younger battle rapper right now. Is real love is is, is that a thing of the past? Because of you know, it's so easy to get. This talk right here, man. Right here, man. Love. Nah, cause I don't be want, I don't be want to sound bitter, but it's just my opinion, bro. That shit is fake. That shit. It's rare that you just get that love, and it's just it's forever, bro. That shit be hurting. That shit make you angry. That shit stress you out. Then you end up not being with the person that you just like, man, we gonna be together forever. Motherfuckers don't know how to keep the spark between themselves, bro. That's why I don't know relationships and and marriage is just starting to just be out the window with me, especially like it's just it's just not it, bro. Cause it just seems so fake. It it don't stick around. Motherfucker be, I love you, I love you. And then come next year you don't love me no more. I would think love is something you really can't lose. You know what I'm saying? But nah. Hell no. Nah. That's why I think it's best to either like be single and just fuck around. But you gotta be honest as you fucking around. Don't be lying and shit. Yeah, yeah, I fuck with you. Da, da, da. You the only one. If you wanna fuck with multiple people, make sure you tell the person that. You feel me? Women now. It's so easy on the internet. It is? Cause it's, I see the nigga with a bunch of dudes. If it's that easy to get women, <laughs> I see the nigga with a bunch of dudes all the time. Oh. Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, love still exists. Oh, uh, nothing new is up under the sun, homie. I mean, it's just that, it's just that the people before us was more loyal and committed and got past what they felt. This is a feel, this is a, this is a emotionally responsive group of humans. They think what they feel make them right. You have a right to your feelings, but your feelings don't make you right. So, so, so most people process the reason and their logic from their emotions, not from facts and what's true. Motherfucker base what they think is logical and reason from what they feel. And no intelligent person does that. No intelligent person does that. They let they finish subside and then start to try to think. You gotta feel you got to think past what you feel. So. The lawyer shit too though. Motherfucker be cheating. Motherfucker be out here cheating like a motherfucker, bro. Motherfucker do not be wanting to settle down even when they think they want to settle down. A think past what you feel. So. Man, most niggas know they done cheated too. Man, ain't no, ain't now nigga. You can't make me believe. Well, yeah, yeah, I can. I ain't gonna say that. I got a partner. I, <laughs> well, I, I had to think. I got a partner named BC, homie, God rest his soul. He was just murdered. Hold on, when that nigga was, his girl was in jail. N nigga, we in a strip club every night. And I was trying to get that nigga to cheat. Goddamn, nigga. And he wouldn't do it. He said, God. So there's some men out there, homie, uh, that refuse to cheat. They <laughs> it be your homies, too, man. Your homies don't be shit, bro. For real, for real. So it's some men out there, I don't know, uh, they refuse to cheat. They, they, they won't cheat. Uh, they, they, I'm a man who have a desire not to do it. I, I, I've done it. I have a desire not to do it. But there's some niggas that have the desire in the actions that don't do it, right? So when you look at what he did for her, uh, we don't know the extent of their relationship for her to go get that young nigga dick. And that young nigga dick can be good too now. The young nigga be on them dreads, fuck long with it now. <laughs> Got some tricks we can't do. <laughs> Suck ass, he put through all kind of shit. So nigga, we might be barren after so long. And that young dick thrilling and appealing. Suck ass is crazy. <laughs> bro, suck ass is crazy, bro. Dick is crazy, bro. Boring. After so long. And that young dick thrilling and appealing for that feeling. So, <laughs> shit, nigga. Yeah, they might get back together. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, Jeezy and the Chinese, bro. Oh. Uh, 
Nigga, in Sioux Falls, they ain't never got law. <laughs> they ain't never got law. All they can do is fuck. All they can do is fuck. Because what we're released today is that, that they separating because of cultural differences. Yeah. Oh. Uh, my mother, my, my mother told me, she said, when you have children outside your race, it confuses the, the kids. They don't know which way to go. They don't know which way to go. It confuses the kid. So, baby, go over here and speak Vietnamese. Come over here and get called a little motherfucker. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, so, oh. Um, no, 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 bro. That's just like that's just like your mama said and your daddy said, bro. That's just it. That's all. I would think that a person who can have two separate cultures as one person would enjoy that. Like we go over here and do that, but I'd rather be over here calling my uh, being called a little motherfucker because it'd be fun as hell over here. Ain't no rules for real. Everybody ain't as strict as when I go over here. I gotta dress a certain way. I gotta speak a certain way. I gotta sit. You know what I'm saying? Men get to be free, but I don't type shit, you know? Whatever your business needs, but I, this I, I guess that would be considered not knowing which way to go, but they would still be open to like, no, nah, I'm this, this is the culture of that. You know what I'm saying? You gonna always rebel regardless, I don't give a fuck. Each with his own kind. But we don't know that, don't we? Because we get caught up in our feelings. Oh, we don't know each with his own kind. I mean, but when you see all these separations, it kind of makes you, especially when you're, when you're, when when marriage comes up, it's like, damn, is is marriage really a waste of time? No, hell no, homie. Every nigga relationships do it. Mama and son do it. Daddy and son break up. Brother and brother break up. Brother and sister break up. Cousin and cousin break up. Coworker and coworker break up. Why wouldn't you think you would get into it in your, in your marriage? Dog and the young one break up. Nigga bad in the dog. Be mean to the dog for two weeks. <laughs> I'm guilty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 go cut up. Me too, bro. I got two of them motherfuckers, bro. And I would not talk to them motherfuckers, bro. I'll be ready to get a ass up. I'm still ready to get a ass up to this day. I'm surprised they ain't barking right now, bro. It's seven in the morning right now. It's like they think they were well, one of them. The boy. He think he entitled, bro. He entitled to to be moving around just because I'm up. No, nigga, you gonna wait till I get up. And then I'm gonna do what I gotta do. I gotta do this shit first. Then I can take care of you. I can't take care of you till I take care of this. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Then it be shitting, pissing. Bro, it just be crazy. Eating them all never to the dog for two weeks. <laughs> Man, oh, you, you, have, you, you have trials and tribulations in life. Why wouldn't they be in a relationship? Oh, but nigga, I think motherfuckers don't love how they say they love. Because they be too ready to quit. I don't I'm think trying, motherfuckers love how they I'm trying to tell you, bro. That's why I don't be fucking with that love shit, bro. I probably told two, two people in my whole life, like my relationships, two females, that I love them. And one of them, I don't think I even meant it. No, I didn't mean it at all. But the second one, I did. I don't be playing around with that shit, though. You know what I'm saying? I just don't. And I think people be saying it freely. And like I said, you can't just love me. Say you love me. Like, literally love me, love me, and then act like, eh, eh, it was never, like, come on, bro, I love you. What the fuck is you, what the fuck is going on? Could they be too ready to quit? I don't think motherfuckers love how they say they be love. They just like fucking. And, and they don't make that type of. They like the beginning. They like the, the, the beginning. Everybody want, me too, I ain't gonna lie. When it's all butterflies and like, damn, we flirting and shit. Motherfuckers don't know how to keep flirting and shit, bro. They be letting that shit die. Think motherfuckers love how they say they be love. They just like fucking. And, and they don't make that type of love music no more either. Everything uh, is different. Because we don't believe in the concept of love no more. We think love is about what you can give. I give you flowers. You give, nah, nigga, love is about what you can take. 
Nigga, them women who love them niggas took some shit. Some of them niggas wouldn't work. And, and, and so what we do, we look at either or and say, oh, they weak. I wouldn't have did that. You know how strong you got to be to love somebody till they die? We ain't that strong, my nigga. We a weak group of people. We don't know how strong love is. A motherfucker stay with a nigga just so the kids can have a great life. She learned, come on, homie. It's some unhappy motherfuckers. Married right now. Cause they love their kids enough to maintain this life. Mm. They they <laughs> find, yeah, so somebody got to be willing to make some sacrifices. Oh. Uh, two wrongs don't make a right. And, and that's the problem in, in, in our society. Oh, uh, how much I've been wrong. In some situations, and, and, and nigga, just the, the, the right kind of response that a motherfucker give you, uh, ashamed you to not want to do it no more. It a, but a motherfucker fighting with you, uh, casting you, uh, it's easy to not feel shame. Why are so many businesses using... Hey, I don't know, man. Love is just... Some bullshit, bro. Like I said, I, I come off as bitter. I already know, but I'm but I'm okay with that. Like, I don't care. It shit not as beautiful as it was when you were a kid or type shit. Unless you just in it right and you appreciate who you with and you understand what's going on, you lucky. But other than that, bro, and as I think I feel like that shit don't work. People be settling for motherfuckers they really don't want to be with and shit like that, bro. Man, man, I'm telling y'all, man, that, man that, that, that love is a motherfucker, my nigga. Uh, I always reference Coretta Scott King. I always reference Coretta Scott King, young. as great as Dr. King was, my nigga. He was a whoremonging, cheating dude. They sweep it under the rug. They won't tell us. But I don't look at him. I look at her. As graceful as she was, she never mumbled anything. Never attitude. Never nothing. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's a different kind of love. And it still exists. I promise it do. I mean, them people still on earth. Oh, we just don't go talk to them to see how to love like that. We don't go talk to a woman that's 70 years old that's been married 40 years. We don't, go, we don't even research that kind of shit to go see how do you love like that. Is it even possible? And they'll tell y'all, yeah, girl, he used to be a dirty motherfucker. Woo -woo. It's some instruction on how to love like that. We just know fair relationships from our mamas and daddy. Our aunties and uncles. That's so all we know. So that's what we believe. All relationships fail. And uh, no, nah, I don't believe that. Because I know some people been together 50 years, 60 years. Yeah, but when you look at the data, African Americans, we have the worst marriage rate. We split up more than the, the uh, uh, divorce, divorce with African Americans are higher than any other race. Oh, uh, that, that, that that, that's because we shack and move in before marriage. So by the time we get married, we already really don't like each other. <laughs> by the time two motherfuckers in the black community get married, they already don't like each other because they've been shacking and playing married for two or three years. And they hadn't built nothing together. So by the time they get married, they done already, they already got some, 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 some feelings that they harbor, some distrust. They already got it. But they figure we're going to go get married. Off of what they feel, not what they know. Off of what they feel. Mm. Uh, motherfuckers marry out what they feel, not what they know. I know me and this motherfucker ain't got nothing credit wise that can build something together, but I'm gonna marry them up. Both of them got bad credit. <laughs> this motherfucker can probably keep a job. We ain't got no savings. We know this. But boy, we love each other. You make me feel like, come on, let's get married. Oh, my soul, bro. Cut it out. Call it quits. It, it ain't working. That's why I just said earlier. People be in relationships by force. They be ended up with motherfuckers they don't want to be with, that they know they shouldn't be with, and they be settling. And that shit just, it's just not cool, bro. It's not cool. It's going to hurt, but you're going to have to break that shit up, bro. Man, especially marriage. Y'all tripping, bro. Y'all tripping. Saving. We know this. But, boy, we love each other. You make me feel like, come on, let's get married. With nothing. How long you think this go last? Them feelings. We got to have something else other beside our feelings. That's why in a marriage, 
you go into a, a contract. It's a contract. It's like a business. I knew you was going to say that. It's like a business, homie. Yeah. And if you look at it like a business, y'all will operate. You will, you will protect the, the sanctity of it. Other people do. Nigga, we ain't just finna turn this business apart over dick and pussy and feelings. So we gonna crash Amazon business because I'm mad today because I caught you with it. Come on now. Uh, about two weeks ago, look. All right, man. I'm going to stop it right there, bro. Yeah. It's that... That TK Kirkland talk. If um, if that shit true, bro, that shit just wow. Why? Who invited this man? Like, who invited him to for him to want to dim his light, like you said, bro? To him to try and take everything away from him, you know. And as as far as love, I it's, I done said enough about love, bro. Y'all see where I stand. Um, I think it's I think it's true love out there. Like somebody is truly in love, but for the most part, I feel like people can't get it right. I think it's something that's rare when you find yours and they find you type shit, and then y'all cool. Don't fuck it up. But for the most part, I think everybody be out here settling. Don't really love each other. Don't know what love really is type shit. Don't appreciate each other. Like how you just out here disrespecting the one you love and shit. Not saying I ain't guilty though. You know what I'm saying? I done did my shit, but I'm just saying, growing up and seeing, like, bro, come on, man, this shit shouldn't even be like this if it's love, L O V E, you know? But let me know what y'all think. And catch me on the next reaction.